pro-life progress. Are you ready for some good news amid all of the chaos and devastation that America has suffered over the past year? While liberal Democrats occupy the White House, and while entrenched swamp queen Nancy Pelosi wields her gavel in Congress, I want to assure you that all hope is not lost. In fact, red state governors and social conservatives across the country are scoring victory after victory on behalf of the unborn. You know they're winning by the doom and gloom response from the abortion lobby. Just look at these glum faces. It's Hillary Clinton flack Jennifer Palmieri and Planned Parenthood CEO Alexis McGill Johnson. It feels to me that we are in the midst of a uh, epic, historic power struggle. Medicaid abortion restrictions and bans have tripled. Anti-abortion constitutional amendments have tripled. Um, abortion, abortion restrictions have been enacted this year. A very well-funded vocal minority um, was able to build the essentially um, power inside of uh, many states across the country. And we look at, you know, anti-women's health um, states or anti-sexual and reproductive health states that number up to about 29, where uh, we have very hostile legislatures that are just like not, you know, common sense. The pro-abortion Guttmacher Institute is down in the dumps, too, about the protection of precious unborn babies' lives. Check out this chicken little headline on the grumpy Guttmacher Institute's latest apocalyptic report. Quote, 2021 is on track to become the most devastating anti-abortion state legislative session in decades. Since the beginning of the year, they report, quote, a staggering 61 abortion restrictions have passed. So what's so devastating about the record number of bills being passed by Republicans? Well, in South Carolina, abortion lobbyists are horrified that babies in the womb who have detectable heartbeats can no longer be aborted. They are absolutely unequivocally horrified by beating hearts. It's just horrifying to me that the Republicans primarily in the legislature have chosen to go down this path again. SB1, the first bill of the new session in the South Carolina State Senate, bans abortion here after an embryo shows cardiac activity, which is usually around six weeks after conception. There are exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. The state legislature has been trying to pass this kind of strict abortion regulation for years. Last November, Democrats in the state lost Senate seats, giving Republicans the vote advantage they needed to finally get it passed. Idaho passed a similar law this week, and in Arizona, Governor Doug Ducey just signed into law a ban on abortions of unborn babies with certain genetic conditions. The Guttmacher ghouls are absolutely unequivocally devastated that unborn children with Down syndrome will no longer face automatic death sentences. Governor Ducey says he signed this bill because every life has value no matter their genetic makeup. He views this as protecting children. And while some are hailing this a win, others say this bill goes way too far or doesn't do enough. SB 1457 will now make it a class six felony for doctors to perform an abortion solely due to a genetic abnormality, including Down syndrome. That means doctors could go to prison for up to two years. Under the bill, the person performing the abortion must complete an affidavit stating the patient is not aborting due to an abnormality. It's a really disappointing day for Arizonans throughout our state. North Carolina's GOP-controlled legislature advanced a similar bill this week. And Montana's GOP governor also signed a 20-week abortion ban, while Oklahoma's GOP governor signed a trio of pro-life bills. At the local level, people of faith are uniting to put sanctity of life issues on the ballot, and they are winning hearts and minds. Last week, 200 churches joined to turn out support for a sanctuary city for the unborn ordinance, making it illegal to perform abortions within city limits. Proposition A, as it's called, passed with 62.5 percent of the vote. To see that the people of Lubbock voted for life. And so uh, very encouraging. And this was something that the churches really got behind. We had 200 churches united to get out the vote. Those churches had signs on their churches. They, they were preaching from the pulpit, encouraging people to get out. And 
do what Amos 5.15 says, which is to hate evil, love good, and establish justice within your city gates. Amen to that. And take note, unlike the radical elements of Black Lives Matter and Antifa, conservative pro-lifers behind this year's legislative and electoral victories didn't have to shut down highways, burn down businesses, or incite violence. They stood their moral ground, and they achieved change peacefully. Remember that. While the inevitable battle over Roe v. Wade heads back to the U.S. Supreme Court and rabid feminists descend on D.C., watch who abides by the rules of civility and who breaks the rules when they don't get what they want. History has already shown us that some capital takeovers are more protected and equal than others. I guarantee you that all the incessantly repeated narratives about white supremacists and Trump supporters being the real threats to democracy will be thoroughly debunked when the national abortion showdown returns to Washington. Mark my words. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.